We all have that moment where you realize a camera is no longer bringing you joy. And so you have to let it go into the wilds of eBay to prove that it's a man. Like the Spartans who used to send their kids into the wild. Okay, I don't know where I'm going with this analogy, but these are the cameras that I've sold recently. So the first camera to go is the GW690 version 3. An amazing 6x9 format rangefinder with a brilliant lens, fully mechanical, and a great camera. So why did mine end up sold? It's for two big reasons. First, it's a rangefinder. And as I have found, rangefinders and me just don't agree. But my big gripe with rangefinders, or more specifically any non-TTL viewing camera, is how the viewfinder is just not exact. It's always a little bit off, no matter how much parallax correction and tricks it uses. And then this causes my compositions to be a little bit off of center a lot of the time. And while I do acknowledge that this is a skilled issue, it's one I'm not bothered fixing. The other issue is that for a landscape camera, the GW690 and cameras like it, can't easily use polarizers. And this is actually a big deal for me. Polarizers make a massive difference in a lot of cases, like very bright sunny days where you have to shoot during midday when you're traveling or if you're out on a safari. The polarizer is an absolute necessity to prevent that washed out look. But it also makes a big difference on days you would not think, like overcast days. You can actually get quite a good polarization effect even then. And I've been using a polarizer a lot more while shooting recently, particularly for any wildlife stuff. I've found that a polarizer is almost a necessity now. Unless it's stealing too much light and your film isn't fast enough, then it's kind of annoying to use a polarizer and you end up just not using it. And when it comes to polarizers, like no matter what idiot TikTokers say, you cannot fake the effect of a polarizer in Photoshop. And also when you're shooting film, a polarizer can actually make a bigger difference compared to a digital camera particularly on slide film, because when you're shooting slide, because it reduces the specular highlights, it actually pulls down the very top edge of what the camera meter can see just enough to help get a bit more latitude out of your slide film. And it can actually be quite a big effect. And then lastly, the six by nine format just eats film. You get eight shots per roll of 120. So an entire five pack only gets you 40 shots or less if you forget to take off your lens cap for half a roll of Velvia 100 in Miyajima. Not speaking from experience or anything. So for the future, I'm going to be sticking with 645 and 6x6 on my Bronica. You know, 645 and 6x6 are economical enough with film to make it worth the cost compared to image quality difference, but it's also a big enough boost over 35 millimeters image quality to make it actually worth shooting 120 without just eating my wallet clean. They grow up so fast. I noticed you wanted ready to leave the nest and go and frustrate somebody else with its weird autofocus and weird metering that you can't really counter for easily and can't set autofocus manually. I'll miss you though. I'm gonna miss those lenses. But it's time for you to set sail. And by set sail, I mean they're gonna shove this into the post tomorrow uh, as soon as the post office opens to get out of the way. Man, I really didn't want to sell the G1. It was nearly, nearly the perfect 35mm point and shoot with interchangeable lenses. And man, those lenses are good. They're sharp as a tack with beautiful rendering. And I actually had thought about putting them on the Z8 with the Tech Art adapter that can autofocus with them as well. But when it came to all those benefits, it had all the same problems with being a rangefinder camera. And also the meter was a basic center weighted meter, which for travel and quick snapshots, I actually would prefer an evaluative or matrix meter because then I don't really have to think about it as much. I found myself with the G1 second guessing what the meter was doing and telling me. And a lot of shots ended up over and underexposed compared to just being able to, you know, 
point and click very quickly with something like a Nikon SLR with matrix metering. Of course, the other option then is to like manually spot meter, but when you're traveling, you want something that's easy and quick and can meter itself rather than, you know, having to take out a spot meter, take readings, calculate everything just for one 35 mil frame. I'm willing to do that work for medium format, not for 35 mil. The other reason I sold a G1 is that it's another system. You know, I have a very good set of Nikon lenses and having another system to buy accessories and lenses for just makes no sense. So instead of the G1, I should have gotten a small Nikon SLR like an FA, or maybe a cheap 90s SLR like an F801S that I don't mind kind of chucking about on a trip with a cheap AFD lens on it. I'm also particularly sad to see the G1 go because I brought that on my six week trip across Asia and it performed beautifully, except for the lack of a polarizer. Busy getting a black view. God damn it, like, holy fuck, look at that. That is something if the sun goes down. And also, if I just want to use a rangefinder for the fun, I can just use my Nikon SP. It's basically the perfect rangefinder for me. So, now this is a curveball, but I am selling the Bronica SQA. I've already sold a few parts of my kit, like the 135W back and the 150mm lens. And in fact, today I just posted off the 220 back. And the reason for selling this is simple. I want to buy a Hasselblad 500 series camera. You know, the prophecy of Hasselblad must be fulfilled. So my reason for wanting to buy a Blad is mostly for the lenses and the accessories for it. After experiencing some Zeiss lenses on 35mm with the G1, having those lenses on medium format, getting excited just thinking about that. Also, there's a lot of like really cool accessories for Hasselblads, like the flex body. Even though it's apparently a bit naff, according to some, there's also the Nons Instax back, which can shoot uh, Instax square film in the Hasselblad really nicely. So that could be a very cool thing to have. And then there's things like the 70 millimeter back, which can actually be modified to use 65 millimeter film. But also, if I have a Hasselblad system, there is a pathway out if film does go tits up. So I could buy something like the Metabone Speed Booster to use the lenses on a GFX camera. Or you can buy the Hasselblad like CF50C2 back. And that allows you to put a digital back onto a 500 series camera, converting it to digital, allowing me to keep using the camera basically forever. And having a Hasselblad just kind of opens up a lot of options like that for the future and the past. And there's a lot of cool accessories and things like that. And they are the main reasons kind of why I want to get into the Hasselblad system now. And also just because like I've seen the images from them, they're just a great camera. And you know, it's a Hassie. What more could you want? Apart from two Hassies. So those are the cameras that I've sold off and it's a little sad to see them go. You know, I know hopefully someone else will find that camera, take care of it and enjoy shooting film on it. And it's, so, it's a little sad to see those cameras that you spent so much time researching and then buying and learning how to use and bringing them across the world to shoot photos for you. You know, it's a little melancholy to see them disappear into the ether that is eBay. And that just means I now have money for more cameras. So I'll see you next time.